And welcome back. I finally got a chance to test the few, brand new, almost brand new, uh, Fujifilm X-T5. It's actually been out for quite a while now, but that's the first time that I got to try it for a, an ex, not an extended period of time, but for a, like about a week. And so I wanted to share my uh, first thoughts about this uh, new, old, refreshing camera. And now why uh, new and at the same time old? Um, it's new because it's got the new 40 megapixel sensor, it's got the new uh, algorithms, it's got the new processor, it's got all the uh, bells and whistles from the X-H2. So it's new by all means, but it's actually old because it goes back to the roots of the X-T line, especially the X-T uh, one digit uh, line, which is a photography-oriented camera that uh, also happens to shoot good videos. Now, uh, you all know if you follow, if you've been following Fujifilm stuff, you, you all know that um, uh, the Fujifilm XT5 has finally got away from the tilty screen, from the flippy screen, and it's got back to the um, tilty screen over here that you see over here, and so uh, it feels exactly like an X-T3, even from a weight standpoint, it's uh, lighter than the X-T4. Now, I don't have the X-T4 with me anymore because I sold it, uh, as I said, in a few videos ago. Uh, but the, the camera feels pretty much an, like an X-T3 uh, with the X-T4 battery and the X-T4 stills videos, which that you see over here. And so, from a photography standpoint, this is a very refreshing camera. It's a camera that goes back to uh, what we all loved uh, from Fujifilm, which is dials, ISO dial over here. Uh, we got the uh, shutter speed here and the exposure compensation here. And for this reason, it pairs perfectly with lenses with, a, with an aperture ring on the body. So from this standpoint, using it with the uh, 18 to 120 is not as uh, straightforward as it is with the, uh, using that lens with the XH, uh, X-H2 uh, camera, just because this one is kind of calling for that lenses that have uh, um, an aperture ring. From my first week of use, and it could, I wanted it to be a more intense use, uh, but I couldn't for various reasons. I can tell you that if you're a photographer and you're not a uh, wildlife, some, someone that needs that crazy 40, uh, 40 frame per second shooting uh, capabilities that the X-H2S gives you, this is probably the best camera you can buy in the Fujifilm lineup, even over the X-H2. Uh, just because it's from a photography standpoint, it's got all the things that the X-H2 has, but in a smaller, more photography oriented body uh, that it's also, don't lie about it. It's also uh, more uh, pleasing to look at compared to the, um, uh, the professional looking body that, they, that, that you have in the, in the, in the X-H2. I will have a separate video talking about the image quality of both the X-H2 and the X-T5 compared to the X-H2S just to help you uh, decide what works best for you. So stay tuned on the channel for that video. I'm working on it as we speak. And my using this camera is, re again, refreshing. The one thing that doesn't um, convince me that much is uh, basically the, um, the joystick here. It's, it's like the previous cameras. It's not that it is uh, worse, but now that I'm used to the size of the X-H2s, uh, this one feels small and it's uh, a little bit more, uh, I don't know, to me, it's a little bit uh, less straightforward to use. The one major thing that it was my main concern was is that um, basically, Having a couple of cameras, one of the XH line and one of the XT line, it's going to drive you nuts just because everything is in a different position. And for that reason, uh, 
me, I've been using an X-H2, S and X-H2 for months now. Every time I bring the camera to, uh, to my eye looking to change the uh, autofocus point, I always look for the for the um, for the um, joystick over here. While in this case it's over here, so having to mentally switch all the time between one camera and another can drive you crazy. And that's the reason why I sold my XT4 and I decided to go with an XH2S and an XH2 because I didn't need, I didn't want to. Uh, actually have to think about those things uh, while I'm shooting. I had flirted with the idea of buying this one because my friend that is loaning me this camera is uh, it's not sure if he wants to keep it because he's not using it as much and so I could uh, get it at a very good price. So I was flirting with the idea of buying this and selling the X-H2 but after using it, uh, despite being a refreshing experience for uh, stills especially, um, I cannot allow, I cannot afford to do that just because uh, it felt weird to adjust every time I switched cameras. And since when I do client work, I often switch cameras, I cannot, I cannot afford to uh, have to think about what I'm doing. Now, I don't do weddings, but if I were doing weddings, you cannot afford to have a completely different setup if you're shooting like a wood with two primes at the same time with two cameras. It's going to be disruptive trying to make it work and you're, you're going to fry your brain all the time. So my advice is uh, decide either you want one style of camera or the other. And so if you have an X-H2, probably wait for the upcoming XS20, which probably is going to have the same 40 megapixel sensor and stay in that uh, kind of ballpark with that, that kind of style of camera or get an X-H2, X-H2S uh, and if you're into the X-T line just stick with the X-T line because the way Fuji have designed those cameras makes a whole lot of a difference in, the, in your day-to-day -day use. Uh, one thing that I, I have noticed on this camera, the first time I used it a, a while ago, uh, while I was running, it looked to me that the top dials, the top frame, was less quality compared to the X-T4. Uh, now that I've used it, it's, it was just, it was just stupid thoughts. I, I don't know, I had that kind of first impression, but now it's gone. The camera is built really well. It's got all the things that we used to and it's a great camera from an image quality standpoint because the 40 megapixel sensor is a great sensor. Again, we're going to talk about it in a different video. The one thing that I've noticed is that uh, compared to the X-H2 and the X-H2S, if you're using, uh, if you not even shooting faces, okay, but you're shooting something else and you have um, uh, They've forgotten your face de detection uh, on, your face or eye detections on, sometimes the camera finds faces and eyes where there's nothing even similar to those. And this feeling was not, I, I didn't have that feeling ever with an X-H2 or an X-H2S. If, if there was one thing that I was very confident was that the face and eye de de detection would uh, trigger when there were actually faces or bodies in the camera. With this one, it looks like uh, sometimes it finds uh, faces where there, when there's there's no fa faces at all. Uh, is it a big problem? Probably not, but especially for me, like the way I shoot, if I'm not looking for faces, I always turn turn it off. I have uh, dials assigned, buttons assigned to turn all of these stuff on and off and that's how I would set the camera if uh, this camera, if I hadn't to return this camera to the, to, the, to, the, to the owner. So it wouldn't be a dramatic issue and that's probably one of the reasons why I, I am noticing this in this camera and I didn't notice it in the other cameras. I don't know but that's something that I felt it was worth being mentioned. Other than that, you will feel right at home. I'd much prefer the way they've done the 
doors on this side over here. They're actually doors rather than uh, rubbery, flip-flopping things. Uh, that's way better. Uh, um, it's really way, way better. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot think about anything that would uh, not, would tell me not to recommend this camera. It's a lovely camera. If you're into photography more than videography, look no further. This is a great, this is a great camera. Even the grip, although it's not the X-H2 or X-H2S grip, you know uh, they have... Uh, improved a little bit the grip on this one it's better than the xt4s of course with big lenses uh, you will still feel the tendency to go uh, front heavy but with this one i can you i can have all my four fingers wrapping around the grip while with the xt4 for whatever reason i always had my pinky going uh, outside of it. I don't know what it is, but probably the, the design is made in a way that it makes this a better uh, holding camera. So uh, that's it for my first impressions. I will definitely keep uh, working uh, with this camera, trying to uh, come up with a um, full review uh, soon. As I mentioned, there's another video upcoming probably next week uh, when I compare the image quality between the 40 megapixel sensor and the uh, 26 megapixel sensor and I will probably discuss uh, which of the three top of the range cameras you should buy if you're interested in Fuji so stay tuned for that video and I would say that's that's really it for today uh, one thing though, before before wrapping this uh, a lot of people like complain that the view that the viewfinder is not improved as much as it is the one in the X-H2 and while I can understand the will to have something improved, I can also tell you that shooting with this viewfinder is fine. Guys, don't worry about it. Resolution is more than fine. The it's easy, it's easy to use is really, really nothing to worry about. It was already good in the X-T4. It's not that now it is a bad one. It's just that another camera which costs more has a better one there's no reason to to really complain about it the one stupid thing that i still think fuji made wrong is the lack of any connection for a um, uh, battery grip over here i don't know why you would make a photography oriented camera and then leave a battery grip out as an option i understand it's not probably selling great with the xt4 or the xt3 but just do it, make it, sell it a little bit of a higher price so you can make a little bit more profit and justify it. But give those few people that need it, give them, a, give them the option. That's something that I still don't understand about Fujifilm's decision on, on this. Other than that, that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.